Lord. Dear Lord, we want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for you are such a good, good God. Lord, we thank you for seeing us through, Lord, this very difficult um, two and a half years. Lord, it's such a joy to see that so many people are able to enjoy food and drinks and fellowship even in the foyer this morning in church. Lord, we give you thanks. And Lord, we give you thanks for all the good things that you have done in our lives. So many, so many miracles, Lord, that you have done in our lives. Sometimes we even fail to see them. But Lord, we give you thanks. You are such, such a good, good God. And so this morning, we come together as a church, Lord, to lift your name up high in this place because, Lord, you deserve all the praises. You deserve all the, the worship, Lord, that the church will give unto you, Lord, this morning. So we thank you, Lord. We commit our service to you. Lord, you bless our service. Come, come and be the king of our service. Come, Lord, and fill this place with your presence, with your glory, as we lift the name of Jesus up high, Lord, in this place. So we thank you. We praise you. We commit the entire service into your hands, Lord, giving thanks in our heart, Lord, giving you thanks in our hearts. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Can I invite everyone to just stand as we enter into a time of praise? When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. Yeah. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I'll lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? Yeah. For Jesus, there's nothing impossible. Nothing can stop. 
praise you, Lord. Lord, truly, Lord, we know that the battle belongs to you. Water and the stone, man on the ground, no matter where I go, I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need you've got is honey in the rock. The sweetness at the mercy seat now I've tasted it's not hard to see only you can satisfy the honey in the rock the honey in the rock the honey in the rock the sun in the rock. Oh, freedom where the spirit is. Bounty in the wilderness. You will always satisfy. Yeah. The sun in the rock. Water in the stone. Manna on the ground. No matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I. Everything I need, you've got the sunny in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands, started flowing when you said it is done. Everything you did is enough. I keep looking, I keep finding, you keep I keep looking, I keep finding, you keep giving. Flowing when you said it is done. Jesus, who you are, is enough. It's honey in the rock. The honey in the rock. The honey in the rock. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. 
nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is about Jesus. Death could not hold for yours is the We thank you, we thank you, we praise you, Lord. Again, I read from Psalms 103, verse 2 to 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives us all, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all your benefits. We thank you for all your love for every one of us, Lord. We give you thanks. We thank you, Lord. We can come here into your sanctuary to praise you, to worship you. Let us not take all these things, Lord, for granted. Lord, we thank you for you are such a good, 
good God. We give you thanks, Lord. We commit our service this morning to you. May you continue, Lord, to speak into our lives, Lord, with your word this morning as we listen, Lord, to your word, to your, to your message, Lord, for us. So we thank you. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a big clap offering. Hallelujah. Thank the worship team too. Hallelujah. And uh, thank you. And also, I want, um, we, I want all of you to join me to show appreciation to our projectionist, Han Si. Uh, this is the first time she's doing it. Uh, and I'm sure she's very stressed out, uh, Han Si, right? Technical issue. Um, but if you notice carefully, Han Si is always ahead of yeah, the next line. And she's very fast so that you will not miss the first word of the next line if you pay attention. And that's really a very good projectionist at work. Thank you, Hans. Thanks for joining the ministry. Hallelujah. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Hallelujah. Um, let's do something different. Usually, we'll have tithes and offering here, right? But I thought now we should, uh, if the ushers are ready, the sisters who are doing this are ready, um, we want to present uh, gifts to the Father. If you are a Father, please don't leave your seats. Don't go to the toilet now. We have something for you. Um, Sister Dale, are, are you ready? Hey, are they ready? Ready, huh? Okay. Um, fathers, can I ask you to please stand? If your wife is expecting, you're already a father. Okay, <laughs> you can stand also. <laughs> um, may I also ask and invite uh, Deacon, Deaconess Joy. Deaconess Joy will say a prayer for all the fathers today. Okay. Uh, come church, let, <clears throat> will you join me in prayer as we stretch our hands to pray for our fathers in this house? Father, we thank you for this holy calling that you have ordained this man to have a part to play in the grooming of the next generation. So, Father, we pray, O oh God, for their blessing, that you have blessed them bountifully in their health, will you bless them bountifully in their wealth. And God, I pray, let their hearts be established to trust you in all of their ways, that the providence of the Lord shall come through their hands, that they may bless their children guide them with care, and speak to them the wisdom of God. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this holy calling. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Joy. Wives and children are blessed to have, please uh, remain standing, uh, to have Christian husbands and, and fathers. They have a role model in our Father God to learn from. Hallelujah. The Christian father protect and love their families, wives and children are secured and blessed because of the obedience to God and the sacrifices these fathers make for them on a daily basis. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Um, remain standing until you get a gift from the... Uh, uh, have you? Okay, okay, if you have, yes, please. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, sisters, for giving out the gifts to the fathers. Okay, let's continue with um, our worship unto the Lord. Tithes and offering. May I have the, the slide for tithes and offering? With, slide with the QR code. And also, uh, church bank account numbers. So as usual, you may uh, give your tithes and offering th uh, by scanning the QR code and do it through pay now, or you can uh, do a bank transfer, and the bank account numbers are, are all on screen, or you can also drop your tithes and offering in the offering box into the offering box at the back of the hall. And for those of you who are giving your faith pledges, uh, please take note 
the account number is there as well for you to yeah, give your faith pledge. I will give you a minute to do this and then we will say a prayer before I move on. Oh, while you're doing this, also um, uh, just make a few announcements. Uh, it's okay, just uh, this screen is good enough. Um, first announcement, please take note that there's a baptism on the uh, baptismal service on the 3rd of July. And for those of you who, are, who wish to be baptized, uh, you please register with the church. And the baptism class, uh, before baptism, it's on next Saturday on the 26th of, 25th of June at 1 p.m. here in church. Uh, please also take note that there's a combined prayer meeting uh, this Friday. And uh, so there will, uh, those of you, you're not excused that to take a holiday or take a break. Those of you, there will be no cell groups, so please come for the combined prayer meeting. Uh, fundraising for the church van is now closed. So thank you very much for you know, contributing um, to, uh, to the church, to getting a church van. We have collected a total of 29000 $150. Thank you very much for your contribution, Church High. We thank God also for His providence. Uh, last but not least, Love Singapore 40 Days Fast and Prayer. The theme this year is to live is Christ. And, uh, but this year, I don't think there will be physical copies. There won't be any physical copies for all of you, but please take note that um, the, the Love Singapore Network will send us uh, the church a link on the 23rd of June. And after that, as, as, pos as quickly as possible, we'll try to also then forward all these links to all of you. And then you can download the 40-day fast and prayer material starting from, uh, I, I believe, as soon as uh, after the 23rd of June. But uh, it starts on the first day of the fast, starts on the 1st of July, all the way until National Day. All right? Okay, let's... Uh, Give thanks to God for the tithes and offering. Father God, we want to thank you and praise you for blessing us, Lord. Um, we are just giving you a token, Lord, just a small token of appreciation back to you. But Lord, we, we, with this, Lord, we want to thank you for being such a good God. Thank you for blessing us with much more. And that, Lord, we ask that you, um, you know, receive this uh, blessing of ours or this tithes and offering of ours with joy and with acceptance. So Lord, we thank you for this. We also pray for the church leaders to make good use Lord, of the, the money so that Lord, um, this may be used for the furtherance of your kingdom and for uh, good benefits to members and also to those that the church come in contact with. So we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's uh, sermon time. So uh, speaker uh, needs no introduction. In fact, last night we were having a small little uh, gathering, Zhang Mao, where we talk about you. And, uh, uh, but not because we know that you're your speaker for today, but it so happened that in our conversation your name came up and then uh, somebody in the group uh, shared a picture of your son who looks really like you, uh, identical. So, so, anyway, without further ado, let's put our hands together and welcome uh, Zhuang Mao on stage. Hi, good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, and uh, uh, why you all talk about me behind me? Uh? But it's okay. Uh, my son does look a lot like me. Uh, we, we, we always do the comparison. Then they, uh, some people say it's the same baby, but then one picture a bit faded. Huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, shall, shall, we, shall we pray before, before starting? Lord, we come before you and we, we, we want to learn from you, Lord. Be among us. Holy Spirit, come and speak to our hearts. Teach us your ways. Teach us your words. In Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
So today is Father's Day, but uh, I have decided not to give a message on the Father. Uh, if you remember on Mother's Day, um, Sister Mercy came and then told us about nine, the power, superpower of a mother. Then, oh, very stressed, you know, I need to think of nine superpower of a father. Huh? Let's not do that. <laughs> so, so uh, we know that dads are great also, right? So it's okay. Uh, we will just leave it as that. Instead, um, I, what I felt in my heart was uh, this passage that I want to share with you all. And actually, this, uh, this is from Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Next slide, please. And Romans 14, 17 is a very simple, simple verse. It says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Right? Very simple, right? Okay, that's, that's all. Huh? Okay, that's all the sermon for today. <laughs> no? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, wait. So, as Christians, I think we are all very familiar with the idea of the kingdom of God, right? Uh, yeah, in fact, this is one of the things that Jesus talks uh, most extensively on, uh, especially in the Gospel of Matthew. And at the heart of the idea of the kingdom of God is that the kingdom is a place where God rules, right? Wherever God has authority, wherever God's will is observed, that is where the kingdom of God is. Uh, usually we really associate it with heaven. And of course, that's true, right? In the heavens, all of the angels are worshipping God. They are, they are praising God. Uh, that God's will is observed there. But we also know from the Lord's prayer that God's will is not just done in heaven, but also on earth. Right? We, always, we always pray, uh, uh, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so from all those, and also uh, Jesus also says, the kingdom of God is near you. Right? And we are to seek the kingdom of God. If the kingdom of God is just in heaven, when we die, then we go, how can we seek it? Right? We just wait for us to die and then we can, we, can, we can be in the kingdom. But that's not what it's about. And even here on earth, the kingdom is very real to us. Or it should be very real to us. But here, Paul tells us what the kingdom of God is and is not about. And in this, this is a very funny verse, right? It says, the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. And COS people will be very upset by this, right? Because we love eating and drinking. <laughs> no? Looks like you all love eating and drinking. I do, I do. But... Actually, uh, in, this, in, this, in the context of this passage, it's not talking about just eating and drinking. In, the, in Romans chapter 14, Paul was talking a, about some people who felt that some food were clean, some food were unclean. And as such, some people say, no, 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 you cannot eat this type, and then you cannot eat this type. But other people were, oh, I don't know, what's wrong? What's, what's, the, what's the problem? And so just eat, right? But what Paul here is saying, that it is not a matter of following the rules. Or, rather, or in other words, it's not about legalism. There are no Christian likes to make rules and follow rules. Huh? Is, it, is it true? When I, I think in my, in my parents' time, uh, maybe in the 70s, uh, there's this amazing new form of music called rock and roll, right? And then uh, suddenly there were people who used the drums. Right? And some, some people said, no, 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 drums cannot, cannot use drums, right? Uh, but COSB, uh, not COSB, COS Marine Parade is probably one of the first Singapore church to use drums. Uh, so we are the first hip church, right? And the guitar also. <laughs> so, so we are the, a bit more hip man. When I was a bit younger, uh, uh, there was this craze about uh, Harry Potter, right? But some people say, no, 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 Harry Potter is from the devil, right? 
and also cinemas, right? We like to say, wow, some, some people also say cinema also from the devil, right? Many rules that we like to follow. Maybe today, today uh, we don't think about all these things so much, right? But we, uh, we, we also, Christians still got some rules one, right? And they say, this is what defines if you are a good Christian. Christian can smoke or not? Cannot, right? Can buy 4D or not? Also cannot. And actually, is it true? Maybe, maybe it's true. But the heart of it is not just to follow these rules. Right? It's, not just, it's not just that you cannot... That, oh, okay, okay, yes, sorry, I cannot buy 4D. But the, what is the heart behind that? The heart behind that is that we are to trust God, right? We are to trust God for His providence. That's why we don't do, we don't do all, this, all these things. And so, what Paul is saying is that Christian living is not about following rules. Can you think of some people in the scripture who love rules? Pharisees, right? Pharisees love rules and they are very, very good at following them. And yet, those people who follow these rules the best are the, also the same people who get scolded by Jesus the most. <laughs> okay. Let's go on to the next part. Uh, so, if the kingdom is not about, it's not about uh, this legalism, what is the kingdom about? And here, we first talk about righteousness. If you think about righteousness, um, there's very, a very clear mandate in Scripture that no one is righteous. <laughs> right? Uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 10 says that there is no one righteous. And as, though, and as if that's not enough, you go on to say, not even one. <laughs> right? uh, and, and, that, that's how, and how all of us can stand before God righteous is only through this righteousness that comes from Jesus. I remember when I was um, maybe about 15 or so, attended Pastor Mark's uh, Romans class. Uh, wow, through, go through Romans. Very hard work, you know. Then he said, got alien righteousness. And we were, oh, but what is an alien righteousness? Got alien, meh? Bible got talk about alien. But it's an external righteousness, right? It's a righteousness that comes from Jesus. And, and that's the only way that we can stand before God faultless. We can stand before God acceptable. But do you know that in Scripture, apart from this type of righteousness, there are also some people that are described as righteous. Uh, some examples I list here are Joseph, the father of Jesus, Noah, John the Baptist, Simeon, Cornelius, even a lot, you know, uh, and these are, these are the references. Right? Does it mean that these people are faultless, without sin? Wow, so righteous. And of course, we know that that is not true, right? Uh, some of the people, we, we, we have the sins and the faults listed in the scripture itself, right? So it, it's not that they are completely without sin, but then why, do, why does Scripture describe them as righteous? Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds to think about this. Okay. Give me a break from speaking also. Huh? Okay, so why, why is that so? I think uh, many of you, the first response you might have is mm, maybe because they fear God, right? If they fear God, then perhaps that's how you consider them as righteous. And that is, certainly, that is certainly true, right? These people do recognize that God is God. Uh, I think I especially like the example of Cornelius because Cornelius is, a, is a, it's not even a Jew, but he's a Gentile, but he feared God. And so because he feared God, he asked Peter to come and tell me more about Jesus. And I think in that way, you do see why, why Scripture does, does consider him as righteous. But... I continue to think a little bit more about this, and I come across this very interesting verse. In 1 John 3, 7, it says, He who does what is right is righteous. Uh, yeah, so simple, right? Just do right, then you are considered righteous. <laughs> why, why, this verse equal to never tell me anything, right? You just, just do what, what, is, what is good. 
He who does what is good, what is bad? He who does what is bad, what is righteous? He who does what is righteous. Then, so, so easy, no need to think. <laughs> but I think behind this is a very, uh, it's a very clear mandate. Right? Uh, you have to do what is right and you'll be considered righteous. Do we do what is right? Yes, maybe, sometimes. Do we do what is right when nobody knows? You know, uh, last time when we play game, uh, then I, I show this uh, advertisement from UOB. Uh, what, what advertisement is this? Uh? It's the one where the father, uh, you see Father's Day message, right? Father bring the child, go to the fair. And then uh, the, the uncle there say, oh, someone know already. Okay, the uncle there say, oh, how old is your son? And then, uh, he's free if he's under five years old. And then the father say, he's six years old. Wow. Many parents here, I don't know who would do that. Huh? <laughs> and then the person said, was very surprised. He said, why, why, why? If you tell me he's five, I wouldn't know, you know? Yeah, yeah. But then the father says, oh, but he knows. That means the son knows. Uh, right? I, I, think, I think that's a UOB, you know, uh, uh, just a bank. Uh, supposed to be very greedy, right? Want all your money. But then they come up with such advertisement. <laughs> I think as a church, we can do better than this, right? Uh, but, but yet, I think this, uh, this, if it doesn't speak to you, it speaks to me. La. I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, wow. You want me to just because the, 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 the boy is really five years and one day old. Oh, yeah. I don't want to pay, right? Who do want to pay? Right? Who will pay? Ah, yo, nobody want to pay, right? <laughs> but that is what it means to do, right? When nobody knows. In this case, the son knows, right? So you are setting a, an example for that. But that, that is, that is how, how it can be. How about doing right when it's inconvenient? Right? I, think, I think many times uh, in our, our own, especially in our own work, there are many things where it's very inconvenient uh, to do the right things. Right? Uh, and especially uh, when we are working, we have a lot of uh, deadlines to meet. We have a KPI to hit, right? So we want to try to hit them, right? We hit already, settle already. But sometimes it can be very inconvenient because then, ah, yeah, I, can, I cannot meet this target. Hmm. It can be inconvenient to do what is right. But that's what the kingdom of God is about. When I was younger, we have a word for it, uh, which we talk about a bit more. And the word is, integrity. Right? Uh, nowadays, we don't have this, much, this one so much, although not now and then it pops up. Actually, integrity is a very interesting word, right? Because uh, if, you, if you think about it, it also talks about wholeness. It talks about uh, is th that something is consistent, right? Uh, it, it, it works properly. And that, that's what it means for someone to have integrity. That they are a whole person whether in private or in public, they are the same person. Right? It's a consistent, it's a consistent uh, outlook to life. Yeah. Okay. So pay money, eh? five year old. Eh? Okay, let's move on to, very quickly to the, to the next point. Okay. And the second thing that Paul talks about is about peace. Uh, again, I think as Christians, we are also quite familiar with the idea of peace. Um, like peace being a shalom or wholeness, right? Uh, we, we always say shalom, brothers, uh, shalom, sisters. Right? And, we, and we also know that as Christians that the most important peace that we have is that we now have peace with God. Right? We have Romans 5 verse 1 says, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't this a, a wonderful message? Right? 
that, that we are no longer at war with God, we are no longer at odds with God. Right? We, we, we have a restored relationship with God. Uh, in scripture, scripture also tells us about a peace that is independent of situations. Right? Uh, in, in John, he says, he, uh, he says that, that in this world you will have trouble, right? Jesus said, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And then after that, he goes on to say, peace I give to you, right? And, and peace, peace not like the world gives. And so that, that is a peace that is independent of what happens. Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7 is talking about prayer and petition. And through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, then we can have the peace that surpasses all understanding. And that peace will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So, that, again, that is also independent of situation. Right? Uh, we should, uh, because because it, it doesn't say that your, your problems will be solved, right? Your, your, your prayers and petitions, you, you say, Oh, Lord, help me with A. And then, they would never say it will help you with A, but you have the peace that surpasses the understanding. So even though you still have that problem, it's the peace can be with you. But like before, let's bring it down one level, very practically, right? What about the peace of God in our own lives? If, how about in our homes? If someone was to walk into our home at a random time, okay, uh, for most working people, the house will either be empty or everyone is sleeping most of the time. But let's say there are people around. How does the home look like? Is it one where everyone is just shouting at one another, hey, you do this, hey, why, hey, oh, you, stop that. <laughs> no. Oh, Sounds like, sound like a parent with two young kids. Very busy. <laughs> wow, shout, shout, shout. Or is it filled with anxiety? Right? Is it wow, everybody, ayo, what is that is that gonna when when is the when when is papa coming home with dinner, right? Uh, ayo, don't, uh, why you never do your homework? <laughs> uh, sometimes they really never do homework now, right? right? And that that's our homes, right? If Jesus were to walk into our home, do you would he feel welcome in our homes? Right. Would he feel like, oh, yeah, this is a nice place. Yeah. Uh, I, I would like to stay here. Oh, I, I, oh, wow. don't, know, don't know, should I stay here or not? And how about in our own outlook of life? Uh, I know many of us like to uh, worry. Right? Many of us are very anxious about many things. If you want to worry, there are many things to worry about, right? I, I can add to your worry, right? We don't know. Just now, just now we, we say, we, say uh, we, we can worry about world affairs, right? We can worry about what Russia do to Ukraine. We can worry about whether there will be chicken, pork, fish or mutton, right? Coming in, in through Malaysia. We can, we, can worry, we can worry about the next wave of COVID. Many things to worry about. In our own lives, we can worry about whether we will stay on, on in our job, whether we, we, we will be made redundant, whether we will, leave, we will meet an accident, whether our kids will become a good person. Do you need me to add more worry? No, no need. La, huh? this, uh, okay, okay. I'm trying to reduce this. Uh. But this, this, if you, this, is, this is what, what we can do. And, I, and honestly, isn't this very contrary to the idea of having peace in our lives, right? Um, if, if our minds is constantly focused on these matters, which is why Philippians 4 says, 6 says that in prayer and petition, we thanksgiving present this to God. I think that Thanksgiving is amazing because we, when, we keep, when we start to give thanks, it does change our focus. It does change what we, what we feel about things. How about in our relationships with 
people. Mm, think about the really okay. Think about the five people that you 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 associate with the most. Maybe how will you characterize these relationships? Uh, I know some people are very good at being friends, and that's amazing. Right? But some of us are not so not so good at it. Right? Uh, and and sometimes we feel a bit we feel a bit scheming. <laughs> Wow, a bit cunning. Ayo, this person don't know trying out to get me, is it? Uh, trying to don't know why 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 every time uh, also ask to get things from me. Okay. And let's not forget our own church. <laughs> uh, many people have been here for many 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 years. Uh, more, maybe more half of you are more than twenty years, maybe. Around there, around there. Uh, I tell you what twenty year means. Okay, it means twenty years to accumulate uh, bad, re- bad, re- bad, bad encounters. Uh, right? oh, wow, you know that person ten years ago. Uh, he do this. He say this thing to me. You know, right? Ayo, so quiet. So, <laughs> but it's true, right? It's true. And, and and we can we can accumulate all of this uh, and never let go of it, you know. Wow, forty years later, you say, wow, I remember uh, in nineteen sixty two the person said this. Uh, but we don't remember the good things so well, uh, huh? right? But God God wants to bring peace to this relationship. Right? Even though we are in church for twenty years, we are. This is not the end, you know. You leave the church, right? You'll see each other in heaven forevermore. Right? So, so uh, I think we do need to uh, restore these relationships. This morning when I came up here, I, I greeted you with uh, good morning first, but I also greeted you with 各位弟兄姐妹们,平安! And then no, nobody respond now. Okay. <laughs> But this, this is this is a this is something peace is something that is very central to the Christian identity. Right? In fact, if you uh, among the among the Chinese speaking people, actually there are some people who call us Ping An Pai, you know. Wow, then, uh, and you are supposed to sometimes people go around and hey, hey Ping An Ping An uh, Ti Xiong Ping An right uh, peace right peace. And I think I think it will be amazing if Christians are really identified with that. Right? As people who, who bring peace where they go, who are people who, who, are, who, who, who exemplify this. In Matthew 5, chapter 9, it says that blessed are the peacemakers. Right? Now, not just peace lovers, because everyone loves peace, right? but people who make peace between people. And Romans 12, verse 18 says, if it's possible, as far as it is dependent on you, live in peace with everyone. Right? So, so I, I, think, I think that if we, if we are able to, to live in a life that has peace in our homes, in our relationships, in our church, even in ourselves, in our outlook of life, we would truly be people who would shine with the light of Christ. Okay, last one. Joy. Uh, aren't you glad that there's joy in there? Right? <laughs> when, when Paul says, oh, you know, the kingdom of God is not just about following rules, but then he talks about righteousness. Okay, yes, yes, I must be righteous. Then he talks about peace. And, uh, oh, yeah, there's peace. But then he ends off with joy. Wow, isn't that such an amazing gift? This is centr- so central to what the kingdom of heaven is about. Uh, again, as Christians, we are very familiar with joy, and we, we know that it's much deeper than happiness. Uh, I have a few verses here. Uh, James 1 verse 2 says, Consider it pure joy is my brother when you face trials of many kinds. Right? And Hebrews 12 2 says, Jesus, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, uh, scorning its shame. And Nehemiah 8 10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Right. So, in, in, in all of this, I think we can, we can see very clearly that this joy that is, that is being talked about 
is also not dependent on circumstances. Uh, of course, we can talk about uh, joy in all the different aspects that I talked about peace just now. Uh, and, and I think if we bring joy in our homes, in our lives, in our relationship, and then uh, we, we, will, we will also shine, right? But I want to talk about just one other aspect of joy, and that is joy in our worship. Okay. Uh, do you know that Psalms are full of this? It says, shout for, with joy to God all the earth. And then the trees also sing for joy. And, and the righteous people, the people who come also come with joyful song. And we tell of his works with songs of joy. Right? The worship that we have on Sunday is a celebration. Uh, is that true? When we come, do we celebrate? I think uh, some of us do, right? Some of us, yeah, we are happy to worship God. We, we are full of joy when we worship God. But some of us, maybe not so much. Um, or maybe the joy is very, very, very deep in our hearts, right? And never on the face because it's so deep hidden. I can, cannot tell. Yeah, I'm full of joy. I'm worshiping the Lord with joy. Can you see my joy? No? It's there. Really, it's there. So sad, right? But the worship, worship is a celebration. When you come before God, sometimes we feel, do they no mood to worship? Huh? Uh, maybe, maybe uh, yeah. everything just off by one sixteen of a beat, you know? Very you know, you know, the music. Huh? Uh, oh, not this church. This church, the musicians are great. Uh, <laughs> Right. Or, we, or maybe, maybe we, we come in and <sighs> that woman uh, make me late for five minutes again. Uh, cannot catch the bus. Right. Wow, now all my spirituality all gone already. Right. But worship is not about us, right? right? Why do we worship? Is it, is it to, for us to feel good? I'm sure we do want to feel good. Yes, of course. Of course we want to feel good. But worship is primarily about who God is. About what God has done. Right? The last verse there says, Tell of His works with songs of joy. Right? When, when, we, when, when we sing, How great thou art! Maybe we never sing this song for many years. No? But when we sing that, what are we saying? We are saying that God is so amazing, right? Has it got anything to do with how we felt? I encourage all of us to, to, to have this in our hearts, that whenever we come to worship God, we will put aside the things that we feel and turn our eyes on Jesus. And there, we worship Him for who He is, for what He has done. We worship Him because He is worthy of worship. Right? Uh, and the physical does matter. Right? Uh, if you are full of joy, your body does express it. But it, and conversely, if your body expresses joy, your heart does feel it also. Right. Okay. Uh, sometimes, sometimes we we do when we when we worship God, we do have tears, right? But tears are not opposite of joy as well. When we, I, in, in my own experience, actually, when we, when we do cry and we do tear in front of the Lord, it's actually accompanied with much joy as well, right? right? But again, that is not that. It's not just the experience that we are seeking for. Right? It's the truth of who God is that we want. Let's go move on very quickly to the 
last things. Why I speak about all of this is because how we live today affects how, what we will be tomorrow. Do you all know some old people who, who are full of the light of Christ? When you see their faces, and, wow, ayo, these are so peaceful. And, and, and sometimes and when you hear them speak, they're like, wow, it's coming from a grateful heart, a thankful heart. Right? How do you think these people got there? Do you think yesterday they decided, mm, yep, I will be full of Jesus today, and, and then the light comes, ding! I, actually, I don't think so. Right? I, I think that it comes from many, many years of following Jesus, and living with Jesus, living the life of Christ. And conversely, the opposite is also true, right? Maybe you all don't know uh, these people, but I'm sure you know that grumpy auntie. Right? Unhappy about everything. Right? That is a very triggering sound, right? <laughs> and how did, did, how, how did that happen? Is it because uh, today you woke up with a backache? Yes, maybe. Maybe that's true. Right? But it also comes with many years of... So those of you who like this sound, uh, okay. how we live today will result in what we will be tomorrow. And for me, I don't want to be that grumpy uncle. Right? Uh, if I am in 30 years, you all remind me of today. Okay. <laughs> But I want to live and have the light of Christ in me. Anyone wants that? Yeah, okay, good. There are at least two people who have that. That's all right, that's all right. If you have two people in this church with the light of Christ, they are doing quite well. Right? Three if you count me, so not bad, not bad. Right? Maybe three of us, one will succeed, right? So at least we have representative. This life is a trial for eternity. Right? We are not ending here. We are ending in the kingdom of heaven as it is fully seen in eternity. So, let us all together start living the life of the kingdom of heaven. Right? Shall we live as righteous people? Even in things that don't seem to matter, yeah, that, that fair operator, short of one person's $2 entrance fee, does it matter? Maybe not, right? but it matters for us. It matters for us because we will be living a life of righteousness. Shall we have peace in our relationships, in our homes, in our church? And shall we worship the Lord with joy as we were for all eternity? May the Lord help us. Shall we pray? Lord, teach us your ways. Teach us how to live. And lead us in your ways of righteousness, of peace, and of joy in the Holy Spirit. May your spirit lead us as we go along our everyday life. We pray this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Joma. Yeah, we, we didn't say bad things about you when we were having a conversation last night. In fact, we were saying good things about you. Uh, we were talking about pair. So we are talking about people who actually, um, those who do PhD will lose all their hair. But then I said, I don't have my hair, but I don't have my PhD. And somebody said, oh, but then look at Chuang Mao. He must be coping with stress very well. Very nice head of hair. And he's, he's a PhD. He's a doctor now. So we say good things about you, Chuang Mao. So happy Father's Day to you. Um, yeah, true, right? Um, kingdom of God is 
really not about eating or drinking, not about following rules. It's really about living a life that we exhibit righteousness, we exhibit peace, and we exhibit joy. And I'm sure all of you don't want to be a, that grumpy uncle or a grumpy auntie when you're old. Um, so let's remember to live our lives so that we become a good example for the young ones as well. So fathers and mothers, remember, you don't want to be grumpy auntie or uncle for your grandchildren to see. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's been a wonderful Sunday. It's been such a good service. Thank God again for such vibrancy outside in the foyer this morning as we enter the church. I've not seen this for two and a half years. Actually, I was very emotional when I saw that this morning as I walked in to the church. Um, God is so, so good. Amen. Let's give thanks and uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you and we want to praise you for you are such a good, good God. And thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, God, for your reminder to us once again that kingdom of God is really not about following rules, but truly, Lord, you want us to have Christ in us so that, Lord, as we have Christ in us, as we follow your leader, leading and your guidance, Lord, we will have that true righteousness, that true peace and true joy in our hearts, Lord. So we thank you as we go our separate ways, Lord. We, we ask that you continue to be with us, bless us and guide us, Lord, every day until we see each other again next week here in church. So we thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great Sunday, everyone.